Good morning, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to this morning weary and worn after a difficult week in our country, seeking hope and restoration and a word of truth. And indeed, this is a place where we tell the truth, where we acknowledge a world that is broken, a nation that is lost and in pain, ideals that are fragile and at risk. This is where we tell the truth about the toll that it is taking on each of us. Violence, sickness, death, disparity, and our need for personal and collective healing. This is where we tell the truth about our need to confess our apathy and our complicity. And this is where we tell the truth about God's abiding presence and provision and leading through it all. We are not alone. So friends, we come to this morning as the body of Christ, the one who liberates us from sin and death in the world and who liberates us out of the wilderness into new life. We will sing and pray and listen and speak confident that God is always at work. And we are always working together in this community of believers to find ways that we can be part of God's transforming work. So this morning, it is our privilege to be welcoming during our Minute for Stewardship, three leaders in our community who will talk to us about the Brookhaven landfill and about its impact on our environment and on, on our neighbors here in Brookhaven. This conversation was recorded as part of the program Speak Your Truth, hosted by Vivette Dukes, who has generously shared this resource with us and is an educator and an activist right here in our community. And she talks with Dr. Abana Asare, who's a professor of modern African affairs at Stony Brook University, and with Monique Fitzgerald, a civic activist and organizer in the Bellport area. We are grateful to each of them for being a part of our worship today and for helping us continue to learn about how we can live out our Matthew 25 commitment right here on Long Island. We're also grateful to our worship assistant, Christopher Richardson, our hymn leader, Morgan Monifacier, our Minister of Music, Novi Ishida, our Community Outreach Pastor, Ashley McFall Irwin, all of whom will be leading us in worship this morning. Please also join us immediately following this worship service on Zoom for a time of fellowship and of church school and our adult education programs. And finally, please note that the annual congregational meeting for Setauket Presbyterian Church will be held on Sunday, January 31st, immediately following the 9.30 a.m. online worship service. And that will be for the purpose of electing deacons and elders, congregational members of the church nominating committee, as well as hearing a report from our treasurer and a presentation on the church budget. The formal call for the meeting will be sent to you by email, both today and in the coming weeks. And that meeting will also take place on Zoom. Friends, if you are thirsty for hope, come to the waters. If you are lost in the desert, come to the waters. If you are longing for the one who saves, come to the waters. Let us worship God. 
Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Through baptism, we trace a lineage unlike any other, a holy line of kinship that redefines power and belonging. It beckons us to come by choice, to declare our intent, to make known our loyalty, our loyalty to love, to repair, to justice, to Christ. The waters of baptism free us from the alliances that destroy. May they wash over us and renew the bonds of God. We come together knowing that we are loved, and we come together knowing that there are ways we harm God's good creation. Let us confess together by praying our unison prayer of confession. Creator of life, over and over again you remind us, we belong first not to institutions, traditions, or hierarchies of power, but to you, the earth, and one another. While forces of evil normalize betrayal and block paths of justice, we know we are not meant for such destruction. By your grace, May we shed that which keeps us from living out the claims of our baptism, that we may be a community whose loyalty to love is clear and unwavering. Make it so among us. Amen. Hear the good news. God's love is vast and deep. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The truth is this. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Please join me in our unison prayer for illumination. Holy Wisdom, we ask that your spirit would guide us in meditation on your word, that we might be led deeply into knowledge of you and your love for all creatures and creations. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Listen for God's word to us today. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. By the first day, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, today's gospel reading comes to us from the gospel according to Mark. We'll be in the first chapter and beginning at verse 4 through verse 11. Listen now for God's word to us today. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was the 9th of February, 1996. A news flash came across the TV that the IRA ceasefire was over. This was big news for a young girl growing up in Northern Ireland, in the north of the island. A bomb had exploded in London that night. And the precarious peace that had only been there for 17 months was blasted back into bloodshed. I didn't understand all of this. But I knew those images that I had seen time and time again in my young life of violence, of pain, that those images weren't good. I looked at my dad and I said, is everything going to be okay? I'm sure he wanted to say, yes, it will. But he was honest. He looked at me and he said, I don't know, Ashley, but I do know that your mom and I love you. It was the sixth of January 2021, the day of Epiphany. I was in a meeting here at the church with Kate and we'd been talking about Ash Wednesday, about Lent, and looking even ahead to Easter Sunday. When we had finished meeting, I went into my office, pulled out my phone, and saw a message from my, my dad that said, just looking at the news, what a sad day for the United States of America. I wasn't quite sure what he was referring to, so I quickly opened my computer and there were the news alerts and other messages from friends and I started to look at the images from Washington, D.C. At this point, it was just early reports and all I kept seeing was that the Capitol had been stormed and that shots had been fired. And in that moment, I was both in the present and in the past. My mind flashed back to the 9th of February, 1996. Did Wednesday take you anywhere? 
Where did you feel it in your body as you watched those images of white supremacy so blatantly on display? And how are you doing today? Maybe you asked, like I did when I was nine years old, is everything going to be okay? And that answer from my dad in 96 is one that I hold on to. I don't really think I got it in the moment, but that honesty of I don't know, coupled with the assurance of love has got me through many things. And so here we are, the community of faith, the Church of Jesus Christ. Here we are on the Sunday after Epiphany, a day when we remember that Jesus' very birth was so threatening to the powers at be that the king wanted to get rid of Jesus and others like him. Sunday after Epiphany, when we hear the voice of God breaking through the clouds and saying, this is my son, the beloved. The voice of the earthly king who wanted to harm. And the voice of the heavenly one saying, this is my son, the beloved. So here we are with this story of John calling the people to repentance, the story of God calling Jesus beloved, the story of the waters, of the baptismal waters that call, that seal, the waters that deliver. Here we are at the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry in the water, Jesus' saving work about to begin. That saving work that would get him executed. I wonder if Jesus ever asked his parents, is everything going to be okay? The story of the gospel is not always a story of everything being okay, but at its heart, it is a story, it is a reality of everything being made new, of everything, of everyone being liberated, being free, free from evil, free from sin, free from white supremacy. You know, as I sat in my office and as I watched that news coverage from Wednesday, there is an image that's haunted me ever since. An image of a cross being erected. An image of a banner that said, Jesus saves. The Reverend Jess Cass said this about it. This is really important to name as we pay attention to the images that we are seeing. When Jesus saves, which is something I believe, is intertwined with Confederate flags, this is not Christian. This is white supremacy and this is sin and we have to name this in order to deal with it and to change. And, I, you know, it, it would be so easy for us to point the finger and say, well, that's not my version of Christianity. That's not the, the Jesus I talk about, the Jesus I church that I love. But friends, as we've been on this journey of anti-racism and this journey of being a Matthew 25 church, we know that there are ways that we continue to perpetuate the evil of white supremacy and so when if we're going to point that finger we really need to come to the water and also repent so what do the waters of baptism say to us today 
What do they say to you today? What are they pulling you back to? Baptism calls us again and again to repentance, but also to belovedness. Repentance and belovedness together. And baptism is not about us, but it is about God's faithfulness to us. And so in a few moments, friends, we're going to reaffirm our baptisms together. And if you have not been baptized, please join in the ritual and consider if you would like to be baptized. So friends, get some, some water, a, a bowl, a cup, whatever you have. And let's listen. Let's listen to these questions these vows from our baptism. And what are they saying to us in this time and in this place? Beloved people of God, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin, of our being grafted into Christ through the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. The power of sin has been broken. And God's kingdom entered our world through our baptism. We were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate the freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism. So friends, I've got some, some questions that I will ask you. We're going to ask once again to reject sin to profess your faith in Jesus and to confess the faith of the church, the faith into which we were baptized. So friends, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? I do. Who is your Lord and Saviour? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. So friends, I want to invite you to take the, the water that you have. You can pour it into something else if you like, or, or touch the water, feel the water here. The water. These streams of love. These streams of repentance and of belovedness. Friends, touch the water, feel it, and let us pray together. Remembering the grace God has poured out upon us and trusting in the future God has promised to us. Let us give thanks to God for the gift of baptism. Marked, claimed, and cleansed, and called through the gift of baptism, we are yours, O God. Your breath moved over the chaos in the beginning. Your feet danced with Miriam at the edge of the sea. Your voice tore through the clouds at the River Jordan. Your heart broke on the cross when you poured out your life for us. Your hands caught fish for Easter breakfast on the shoreline. Your tears, they water your thirsty world as the rain. Your fingers mark our foreheads with the abiding grace, perfect freedom, and holy truth. Through the gift of baptism, we are yours, O oh God. You wash us with grace. You anoint us with promise. You feed us with mercy. You fill us with joy, fruit of the earth, watered and fed, we remember. In baptism, we are risen to new life in Christ, forgiven sinners, beloved children of the covenant. Through the gift of baptism, we are yours, O God. Thanks and praise to you, O holy triune God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. So friends, take the water, put some on your finger and put the mark of the cross on your hand or on your forehead. 
and say, I give thanks for my baptism and I remember my baptism. Beloved children of God, we have renounced evil. We have professed our faith. May we know that we are beloved and that we have work to do. Amen. I'd like to begin by formally introducing our guests. I know them well. However, I want to introduce them properly. Monique Fitzgerald is a founding member of the Brookhaven Landfill and Action Group, which I am a proud member also. She is a lifelong resident of North Bellport and an organizer and activist fighting to ensure that Black Lives Matter throughout Long Island and beyond. Our second guest tonight is Dr. Abena Sari. She's Associate Professor of Africana Studies and History at our very own Stony Brook University here on Long Island. She is currently writing about and researching historical justice in a global framework. She too is a member of the Brookhaven Landfill Action and Remediation Group. Please join me as I welcome them both. Hello. Welcome. Hello. 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 
It is an honor to have both of you here with us tonight. I would like to begin with you, Monique. Um, I read in your bio that you are a lifelong resident of Long Island. I did not know that previously. So can you share with us what that means and how that impacts your involvement in this work? Yeah, so I um, just want to make sure that my camera stays right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't know why it's being, I guess because it's opposite of what I'm thinking. So I've been on Long Island my whole entire life and generationally, uh, my family's been on Long Island for um, centuries. We are Sedecott natives from the North Shore. So that's the Setauket area of um, Long Island and that's in the town of Brookhaven, what we call now the town of Brookhaven. Mm -hmm. But um, it was grabbed from our natives in, 16, in the 1600s. So um, that's where I come from. My family lived there up until about the 60s. Uh, 1964, I believe my grandparents moved to, no, actually, yes, actually 64. They were married in 61, yeah, 64, to North Belport. So North Belport was um, like a working class uh, community of, at, at that time, it was white, mostly white people. Okay. But as the black and indigenous people moved into the neighborhood, there was a, a you know, a white flight taking place. Mm -hmm. So most of the white people moved out of that neighborhood as we moved in. And um, this is where my family flourished. My grandparents bought a house. And um, we've been there ever since 1964. I was born in 78, and this landfill came in 1974. Hmm. That's longer than my existence on this earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, so there's been a landfill in Brookhaven since 1974. Yes, so the activism against this landfill started before that time. The, there was a landfill in Islip prior to Brookhaven and that landfill was full. Was full. Mm -hmm. So they made plans to move and start a new one in the town of Brookhaven, mm -hmm. right in Yapank, which is four miles from our community. And it, um, we fought against it from that time. So there's never been a time of record that we wanted this landfill here in the town of Brookhaven next to our, our community. Um, the town hasn't listened to us since then. <laughs> They've made minor um, appeasements along the way. But at this point, we're tired of being told that the landfill is going to close, that they're going to do what they need to do. We want them to actually, uh, we want to hold their feet to the fire and just have them close it. Absolutely. So the plan is for them to close it in 2024, um, but we don't see any evidence of them closing it in 2024. So this is why we put this, uh, this group together. Uh, we started in June. Mm -hmm. This specific group, like I said, activism against this landfill Bam. has been throughout. Mm -hmm. But this specific group started in June of um, this year. We were out in the streets for the Black Lives Matter protest. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that we not only um, dealt with what was going on nationally, but what was going on in our backyards. So this landfill is something that our town, like I said, never wanted. Mm -hmm. um, we are already suffering um, with asthma and different respiratory illnesses in the neighborhood, cancer and things like that. So we, um, and just the normal Oppression, um, oppression that happens against Black folks with the health system, with the police, with the education system. So this landfill is on top, exacerbate, exacerbating this situation. So um, we can't have that. And this is why we decided that we were going to form this group and really just stick to it until it got closed. Yes. Dr. Abinasari, please jump in. How did you get involved? First of all, welcome, welcome. 
<laughs> I met you speaking on a panel with you with a local group building bridges in Brookhaven. Shout out to that organization. I would be remiss if I did not mention the organization on whose shoulders um, definitely I stand in terms of activism here on a local level. And it is there that we met. So you have been an activist at least for as long as I've known you, and that's been a, a few years now. Um, how did you get involved with this particular cause? Well, um, I got involved with the Brookhaven landfill issue because of my connection with my sister here, who I'm on this uh, show with today. Yes. We have been we first connected around Black Lives Matter marches in, in about 2016 or so, that there was a time when back then there was an effort to kind of organize some marches in response to the Black Lives Matter movement. And, and then that's when we met and right away, when you meet people and you understand that they are in your life for a reason. That was how I felt about her. And more specifically, this is a person who has such deep roots within Long Island and has a wealth of knowledge and information, both about the history, as she talked about her household and the fact that she is indigenous here, and her roots stretch back before settlers, before the British came into what we call Long Island. Her household was here. Mm -hmm. okay. So that gives you a different sense of when you're new to an area, who do you get to know? Who do you learn from? What a pleasure to have the opportunity to connect with people who have such deep historical roots. But beyond that, mm -hmm. a person who had a vision of what Long Island could be, right? And was out here trying to make the connections and work to make Long Island a place where we can all live and thrive together. Because when most people think about Long Island, you think of the history of white life, about among the most segregated places within the USA, and yet what that narrative often overlooks is the fact that there are people here who are indigenous, black, and and from all around the world who are here making a life. So so I was connected to her. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, in the past few years, my household also moved not too far away from the Brookhaven landfill. Mm -hmm. And so when I entered that um, town, the area around the landfill, immediately you begin to hear about the history of this landfill and the fact that it has been a troubled site for close to 15 years. And that's something which has to be said. This is a landfill in which the town of Brookhaven in this past year had to pay a $250,000 fine to the U.S. Department of Justice and the EPA because of the Clean Air Act. The landfill emissions, the gases that were being released into the air were in excess of what is allowed by the Clean Air Act. That is one data point that we can look at. We can look back into the 80s and see that there was actually a leaching room, toxic um, poisons mm -hmm. into the groundwater. And as we know, once that occurs, there is a leachate plume which is still with us today in the area. It cannot just be fixed like that. Mm. So when we are thinking about the Brookhaven landfill and our efforts against it, as Justin said, this is a this is 
a movement which has been occurring for decades because it has always been the proximate areas which have been the ones raising the alarm. Something doesn't smell right. Something doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. And when we come to, to speak about North Belport specifically, according to the CDC, the North Belport area has the lowest life expectancy in all of Long Island. That single census tract has the lowest life expectancy in all of Long Island. This is right next door, adjacent to the Brookhaven landfill. And the community has been saying for decades that something is wrong here. And what we are asking is for the town of Brookhaven and, and also for, for New York State, the Department of Environmental Conservation to step up to the plate and put a value onto the lives of the people who are being disproportionately impacted by the Because the evidence is there. We have the emissions, we have the leachate plumes, we have decades in which folks have been speaking about noxious smells in the area. And that when we talk about smells, I mean, among the things that is oftentimes overlooked is how this impacts people. What does it feel like as a child to wake up and leave your house and be hit with a smell that makes you feel sick on your way to school? There is, uh, there have been lawsuits about these smells and how they're linked to the landfill. This is a larger issue. And what we are asking for right now is for Brookhaven Town and New York City to be accountable. We are named and claimed as God's beloved. And that good news calls us into discipleship, into God's work of repairing the world, starting in our own communities. How will we respond to the generous truth of our baptisms and the urgent needs around us this week? Take a moment to consider what you have to offer. As we continue in prayer, we acknowledge that this is a week when we, many of us, have been at a loss for words. Friends, be assured that no matter how elusive your words, or even if you can only find silence, God listens and knows what is on your heart. This morning's prayer is woven together from the words of several Presbyterian leaders that have been shared by the Presbyterian Outlook throughout this past week. May they give us all collective words today. Let us pray. Eternally loving triune God, in our baptisms, we become known as your covenant people, connected deeply with you, with one another, and with the earth. May our gifts be used as a witness to your love, peace, and justice. Have mercy upon us and upon the nation in this time of violence, undermining all sense of common good and thwarting every effort to heal the bleeding wounds of our division. We are mindful that it is not by our power that peace will reign, but through the power of your spirit working in us to do that which is your will for all nations, upholding justice, righteousness, and the common good for all people. Blessed God, we confess we are in deep need. 
Let our stumbling be an occasion for humility and a deep turning to you. By your merciful spirit, fill us with courage that we will not falter in the calling to be instruments of your peace. Deliver us from all cowardice that we may confront malignant forces of evil arrayed against the creation of a nation that honors all people. We pray for elected officials whose duty it is to uphold the laws of the nation. Grant unto them the wisdom to do what is right in your sight, even when the right thing is the hardest thing. Amid a pandemic that is devastating lives and communities, amid exposure of the racism still wreaking its havoc in our nation, amid painful polarization and division, we claim our center in your baptismal promise of love. Empower us to live out of that love in all that we do, and especially as we show care to those in pain, those who are sick, who have been injured, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, who are lost, jobless, lonely. Be close to those we name now and give them comfort. God of our ancestors, we remember your promises of restoration and covenant, and we call upon them now. We pray that the Holy Spirit will bring a newfound peace to our land. We remember the warnings of Jesus about violence begetting violence. Save us from further acts of political and racial violence. Save us from mistrust, chaos, and injustice. May the coming days be ruled by truth and goodness and integrity. From sea to shining sea, from small town streets to the halls of power, help each and every one of us to walk in the manner of Jesus Christ. We offer this prayer in his name. He who taught us to pray saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. and live as we pray send 
Send us your spirit and show us your way. Jesus, be with us today. Where there is hatred because of our skin, break down the wall of our us to save us from sin. In your great love draw us near. Jesus be with us. Help us each day to follow the gospel and live as we pray. Send us your spirit and show us your way. Jesus, be with us today. Where there are valleys of bones dry as dust, build up the body of Christ. to trust, teach us a new way of life, Jesus be with us, help us each day to follow the gospel and live as we pray, send us your spirit and show Friends, do you feel it? Do you feel the call of our baptismal waters calling us just like the prophets before to live boldly, to live with love and justice and peace? So friends, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Mm -hmm.